Let's get to our ETF spotlight. Santoli's at the Telestrator looking at high yield making a comeback. Yeah, Carl, high yield uh, debt obviously made a very big comeback as the stock market has since December. I would say that the junk bond market has supported the equity rally, although it has not really led it. And if, for that matter, did not really lead the market down in December either. This is the HYG ETF. This is the iShares high yield debt ETF, a ratio with the 7 to 10 year Treasury ETF. So why do I do it this way? Basically make it a relative chart because this is a proxy for junk bond spreads, for basically the premium that investors are demanding to own high yield. And so when this is going down, uh, investors are getting more nervous. They're less uh, inclined to take risk and the spreads are widening out. Uh, so that's what you see in December here. Obviously, we kind of had this little double bottom in, in around December, January. What I would point out, though, is that we've kind of flattened out. So the spreads have not really improved as the stock market has kind Kind of gone to new heights this year. That might be a, a minor divergence, a minor red flag. And we're only back to about uh, mid-November levels in terms of the tightness of the junk spread. So I think if you were really bullish right now after this huge move in equities, you'd want to see this line mo start moving up again. Now it can move up again with Treasury yields rising and junk bonds not rising as much. That maybe is the more likely one because when yields get very low on the Treasury level, uh, they don't really always tighten up as much when it comes to, uh, to high yields. So something to keep in mind that junk bond is not screaming uh, that the market, the stock market is going to new highs yet. I mean, that, that, that's been one of the, the recessionista's hardest points to discuss, which is the junk bond market is just not confirming that there's some dire economic outlook coming. Well, that's true. So it's definitely not dire. It's definitely back to levels we were at middle of, uh, you know, late last year. But on the other hand, it's not as if um, it's, it's been kind of leading the way for stocks to click to new highs. So uh, I don't think the junk bond market is in any way saying recession is around the corner. What it might be saying, though, is, look, the credit cycle has been running a really long time. And we don't necessarily see it as a reason to pay up as much as we did uh, back in the middle of last year for junk debt. I did like your tweet that we're in the phase where people on the floor ask you why we're up 100 points. <laughs> right. <laughs> this morning. Um, and I do think it's more about, and, and there's no good answer, except that we have been going up. It is the end of the quarter. People seem like um, the market might be lifting away without them, and they don't have as much exposure to it. What, what do you think of this whole idea, and, and Steve hit on this in his survey, that the market can't go up with an, without another catalyst? Is that true? It can drift higher without a catalyst. I don't know that we have to, we, that we would break into a new range without a catalyst. But I'll be honest with you. I think we, in retrospect, if the market were to go up another 5%, would decide what the catalyst was. By the way, the market is not responding one bit to any trade headlines anymore. Right? We're pushing this out into June. Nothing Doesn't is happening. Care. People thought we needed that to maybe break above, let's say, 2,800. Maybe because it, we're hearing that there's still concrete progress. Yeah, something's happening. It's yeah. not, it's not well, off. To your but. point, we worried that 90 days was not going to be nearly enough right. time to get this That's all wrapped up. That's very true. Right? Because there's but not I, an escalation with higher tariff rates. I think the best time for a trade deal is soon. <laughs> it doesn't have to happen as long as it's going to happen. Right?